Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode number one of the new season of the vlog. Uh, I want to take a chance here to talk a little bit about the tour that I'm just coming off of now. It's been an amazing 25 city, two almost two month endeavor. Uh, it was a long time in the making. A bunch of people asked me you know, how I booked it and I started booking it right after we recorded the last album here and now which we recorded in June of 2016 and basically the week after we recorded the album I started making some initial contacts seeing where I might be able to bring the band uh, for uh, the 2017 release we launched it the single on January 1st on New Year's Day uh, that was called We the People and then we released the album in February. I think it was the 17th was the release date. About 10 days before that, I started the Here and Now release tour, uh, being able to go back to my alma mater, the Eastman School of Music. A uh, big thank you to Mark Kellogg for allowing me to come back and do that. Uh, it was really interesting because I got super nervous like playing in front of all the trombone students uh, it was a good reminder. It brought me right back to being an undergrad at Eastman and uh, just uh, and just reliving some of those anxieties of performing in studio class. But it was great to be able to connect with those students and got to see a recital of Marx, and it was just kind of a great time. And from there, we kind of moved on. If you had been following along, I kind of. I went to Ithaca, New York, and Buffalo, and we performed in Rochester, and then went to Cleveland and Akron, and I got to reconnect with some more Eastman friends, Jeremy Siskind, a great pianist. Uh, he performed with me in Cleveland and Akron, and then also performed with me in Detroit, and at his school where he teaches in Kalamazoo, Michigan, which as a side note, I had also just been to uh, with Postmodern Jukebox like two or three weeks before that, so two times in Kalamazoo in just a couple of weeks. From Detroit, I went to Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas, to meet up with my Institute for Creative Music buddy and friend, Chris Teal, great drummer and uh, educator based there. And we've done a lot of stuff together over the years, including this Institute for Creative Music. From Fayetteville, I drove and reconnected with a bunch of people that I met in Argentina, of all places. When I did Trom Bonanza back in 2013, I connected with Irv Wagner at the University of Oklahoma and also with Paul Compton from Oklahoma State University. And the funny thing about being at Oklahoma State was I got to reconnect with an old teacher of mine named Howard Potter. He is there working in their uh, music school in the administration, but he was the first person that turned me on to jazz. He got me involved playing in the music of Duke Ellington. He was the whole reason that I got into jazz in the first place. Uh, some of you might know this, some of you might not, but I was, growing up, I was taking voice lessons at the Eastman School of Music through their community education division when I got a flyer about this big band and uh, joined that. We went to essentially Ellington that year and competed. And the following couple of years, we were in the conglomerate van division so we won that division a couple times and really got just dug into that music and ended up following the jazz path since got to reconnect with howard we got even got to play with howard a little bit i have a couple photos from that stop of the tour this is me with dr potter and then with the osu jazz trombone ensemble and with paul compton and, and also a photo of some of the people that attended the workshop at the University of Oklahoma, which was super fun. From Oklahoma City, I flew to Northern Arizona University, where I was part of the Northern Arizona University Jazz Festival, got to perform with their big band, and got to uh, 
lead a workshop with a bunch of the students uh, from many, many high schools from all around the state and beyond the state. That was, that was also super fun. From there, went to Phoenix and got to play a little bit uh, with some musicians in Phoenix. And luckily, Lucas Pino was also there. And he played, we played a bunch of the music from here and now. And then we had Roxy Cost sit in, uh, another fantastic tenor saxophone player. And yeah, it was just a lot of fun. From there, flew to Seattle. Seattle was interesting. Uh, there was a crazy accident where they shut down I-5 through Seattle and um, took hours and hours and hours. The opening band had to cancel because they couldn't get into town. And it was just a crazy day, but it was a fun gig at the Royal Room. Uh, we got to play there uh, for the first time with some new musicians and it's always great to connect with them. Uh, from there, I went to L.A. and played at the Mint. Our set got shortened down to like 20 minutes. So uh, that's what prompted this very last leg of the tour, going back to the West Coast, back to California. But anyway, from Seattle, L.A., L.A. to St. Louis, where I got to reconnect with another fantastic musician that I went to Eastman with. His name is Garrett Schmidt. He's now the professor of trumpet at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville got to work with the students with him. We also performed in St. Louis as part of their jazz crawl um, at the Curtain Call Lounge from St. Louis and continued on to drove on to Nashville to the Nashville Jazz Workshop. Man, there's some great musicians in Nashville. And then went to Atlanta, the Velvet Note, a great venue. Um, at the Velvet Note, got to play with got to play with a couple former students of mine from Florida, Florida State University, Robert Boone on the drums and Will Fulkerson on the piano. Uh, they did a great job playing the music, and that, that gig was super fun. The first set was sold out, second set close to it, and uh, always great to play at the Velvet Note. If you haven't been there yet, you should go and check it out. It's, uh, the acoustics are great, and they got a good piano, and it's a listening room, just a good place to uh, hear music. And from there, I actually went back to Florida, uh, went to Tallahassee and played at B-Sharps, the jazz club there. Happy to be able to do that. Uh, and also did a little entrepreneurship residency at Florida State University. Uh, we got to talk about a bunch of things uh, having to do with taking action, setting goals, and, and making things happen for yourself after school is done. From there, I had one day off, which was probably not enough time off during this tour, but uh, I had just had one day off and I got to hang out in Orlando before continuing down to connect with some other former students from Florida State, Brandon Robertson, a great bass player that's now teaching at Florida Gulf Coast University down in Fort Myers. And that was my first time in Fort Myers. I played at a nice little venue there called the Barrel Room and I continued back up and uh, made the f a stop at University of South Florida in Tampa and then the next day we on back to Orlando to go and work with Michael Wilkinson and his students at University of Central Florida. So as you can see, it was, the tour was quite varied, you know, a lot of educational stuff, a lot of performance stuff. I got to reconnect with a lot of people, which was excellent. I uh, really enjoyed being able to do that. And um, then luckily during that whole course of time, I've been, I was working with a drummer that I was on tour with Postmodern Jukebox with, a great drummer named Martin Diller, and he 
help to facilitate another West Coast leg of the Here and Now tour. I uh, went out and played with his band at the Blue Whale last week, and then we went up to the Sound Room in Oakland, and then onwards to San Diego, and we played at a place called Seven Grand there, and then a um, couple days of, of stuff around LA and Southern California, and then uh, just on Monday of this week, we played the last gig of the Here and Now Tour, last gig of this leg of the Here and Now Tour until the summer leg. Uh, coming up in August, but we played at the Blue Whale to a great crowd, super appreciative of the music. should be some footage of that concert coming up soon there was a videographer who was nice enough to come down and capture some of the footage from that show you know the best part about this whole tour was just the fact that I was able to reconnect with so many people that I hadn't seen in a long time ranging from good friends to professional you know acquaintances and kind of really you know that just cements to me that this whole business is it's about relationships and it's about you know it's about sharing your music and you know you're you know trying to bring something unique and positive to people and you know it's it's difficult it's a lot of work to put together a tour you know especially as an independent artist like myself and just like countless of you and uh, you know but I think it's all worth it in the end it was you know an exhausting beginning of first quarter of 2017 but definitely super productive I was on the road for most of January February half of March half of April it's been uh, it's been busy but it's been really really rewarding and fantastic and now it's time to one organize the summer leg of the here and now tour one of the big gigs of that tour is going to be performing at Music Fest in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So I'm trying to organize some stuff around that. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments uh, about where I should come, where we should bring the band. It's probably going to be an East Coast, Northeast area, maybe uh, kind of situation for that tour, but uh, hoping to bring the whole band uh, this time. If you haven't heard the record yet, please go and watch some of these videos. Uh, you can see We the People, Lullaby for an Old Friend and Love Wins here on YouTube. So check those out. Grab a copy of the record if you don't have it yet. And I'll let me know again where we should come this summer. And that's it for now. I'll see you guys really soon. <laughs>